Hello again, fellow Beach Bum Traders. Thank you for joining us for our weekly trading game plan, part one for the trading week of June 13th through June 17th. And we're preparing for the economic hurricane. And thank you for all of you that are joining us in the live chat for this live stream. Good morning, Walter. Thank you again for joining us and to everyone else who is watching the replay of this part one of our weekly trading game plan. So thank you again. We'll get started. So part of the title for this uh, weekly trading game plan part one came from a recent uh, presentation discussion that Jamie Dimon, the CEO of uh, J.P. Morgan's um, bank, uh, came out and said, brace yourself for an economic hurricane. And you should be able to find the link to this article in the description box below. But I wanted to quickly uh, review it for you um, as uh, this has been getting some quite a bit of news. You can see he says, brace yourself for an economic hurricane caused by the Fed and the Ukraine war. You can see the main factors and we're going to talk about quantitative tightening and the impact of that in removing uh, liquidity from the markets. Uh, and you can see they already started as of June, and they're going to ramp up to $95 billion of selling off uh, their bond holdings from their balance sheet. And uh, we've been watching Treasuries for a while, watching the impact on that. We can also see the large factor uh, worrying Diamond is uh, the effect of the Ukraine war on commodities, oil, et cetera. He's predicting oil at 150 to um, 175 a barrel. Uh, which is, you know, right now it's 120 something. So, um, and he's saying you better brace yourself. Uh, he says he's being very conservative. Uh, you can watch the video, etc. But again, he talks about uh, the quantitative tightening, bracing ourselves. We're being very conservative. Uh, the cheap money era, blah. So he, he's afraid, you know, that the, um, Fed's essentially going to, you know, going to have to raise interest rates quite quite aggressively. And we'll, we'll talk about that in the upcoming Fed meeting and preparing for that, as that's going to be part of the hurricane. Uh, good morning, JG. Uh, thank you for joining us. Good morning, uh, Douglas. And the question, bonds or stocks, are they holding stocks? They are holding stocks. They are selling the, if you're asking about the Fed, the Fed bought, bought bonds, treasury bonds and mortgage-backed securities and put them on their balance sheet and that added liquidity, put cash into the market. That was the discussion about them, you know, printing money. And now they're going to be selling their bonds or letting them expire. But the selling will remove cash out of the um out of the markets. Uh, they'll pull cash out of the markets. And I saw somebody was saying, oh, and they throw it in the fire. They don't really do that, but it does remove liquidity from the markets. So there could be less less cash floating around. Uh, we talked about, you know, the effect of the Ukraine war on commodities and, and that ongoing and huge volatility. And we'll probably talk in part two um, tomorrow at 10 a.m. I'm probably going to do uh, this week at 10 a.m. And uh, we'll, we'll try this out at 10 rather than 9. And I'll talk about a poll I put up uh, to so everyone can vote on what the best time is for everyone for these weekly trading game plans. And then you can see he's taking the step of, um, you know, being very conservative. He's talking about money market securities. And, and we'll talk about that as we get uh, in our strategies and themes. So. And then there's some just uh, personal stuff. So, again, you can uh, see this article, the reference in the description box below. You can read it in more detail. Uh, but again, you know, uh, he's saying the, the war, the prices on commodities, etc. Uh, you better brace yourself for this economic hurricane that's that's coming out. He says, well, right now we're in, you know, uh, we have good weather, but the hurricane's coming. So. So we'll get started with our, our typical uh, weekly trading game plan. We'll start to look at the markets where they ended up on Friday. Obviously, it was very red. Markets were down big. Uh, I'll talk about why in a minute, but essentially the CPI data was very hot. So inflation is still very hot, 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 as we've been saying for 
you know, six plus months, nine months now, I guess. Uh, so we could see pretty much everything was uh, declined. Everything's uh, weak under the covers, very bearish. We've been saying we've been in a bear market since January, We're still very much in a bear market. So we play that accordingly. And we have a number of strategies we've been sharing for quite some time on um, how to play a bear market, how to make money in a bear market. And we'll also talk about how to uh, prepare yourself for this up upcoming e e economic hurricane and how you can weather that storm uh, to the best uh, possible. Uh, News-wise, we see gas prices are hitting new highs almost on a daily basis. Uh, yeah, new highs. Uh, this is the hottest inflation in like 40 years. Yeah, four decade high. So uh, yeah, inflation's been hot. It's not abating. It's not transitory, um, and we can see the impact. So right now, oil's in the 120s. It had peaked at 130 earlier. So it's it's been pretty stable in the 120s this week. Uh, natural gas it peaked up over nine. Then they had that uh, explosion at the LNG. Um, refinery and i guess they're going to be down for three weeks it take took a nice dip we made some nice money on our cold position on that and then it's uh, working its way back up into the nine so we'll talk about opportunities there gold started pushing back up um and then we saw the the this is the futures on all the markets so they're still pointing down uh then we saw the treasuries went up quite a bit over three and are inverted right now. And so that was further pressure on the uh, stock market. So that's where the overall markets ended up. Now we'll look at sectors, groups, etc., And you can see we have a video that you can see more information about how to use this FinBiz tab. You can find our affiliate link to FinBiz in both the notes and in our uh, the description box, etc. Just a side note is the notes from all our, our weekly trading game plans now are in a Google Drive folder, public Google, Google Drive folder, and you can find the link to this folder in the description box below so you can reference these notes uh, in, the, in the future. So again, we have this link. Let's look at the groups, sectors, etc. So you go to FinBiz, go to groups, we can see pretty much everything on Friday was red. Uh, the least red were the standards that we've been talking about for a while, consumer defensive utilities and energy. So if we zoom out again, same thing for the week, they were the least bad performing. And once we get to a month, we can see uh, the top performers are energy consumer cyclical, which is uh, unusual, but basic materials. And then the month, it's been uh, three months. The quarter of energy has been the only thing that's really been outperforming. Uh, and it, it continues to do so. So if we also then go to industries, see specific industries. We can see silver, gold, uh, all, all the precious metals uh, outperformed on uh, Friday, which was good. Uh, I, they're finally, you know, figuring out that that's one of the main inflationary hedges is uh, precious metals. Uh, we've been holding, you know, gold and silver for quite a while. Again, I expect to see more inflows into gold, silver. We go to the week, it's mostly energy, a uh, uranium pop back up, coal, or it's all energy, and then silver gold. And we see some consumer defenses. We'll talk about that a little bit too. Uh, some solar, et cetera. And the worst performers are all gonna be like tech and things like that. We had travel services, airlines, I think did poorly. Um, and again, for the month, it's energy, uh, commodities, basic materials, et cetera. And the worst performers are, are retail, and we'll talk about the impact of Target and uh, on their on the supply chain, etc. So, so is the volume okay? Can somebody give me a thumbs up on the on the volume and the video? That would be helpful. So we'll talk about the economic economic data from last week.
Nothing much on Monday, Tuesday. And then I'll jump back to the indices in a second. Um, we got mortgage rates. Uh, again, mortgages are going up. Uh, housing's rolling over. We've been talking about that for a while. Uh, crude oil inventories were up uh, where it was expected to go down, but it didn't really impact the price. Same thing with uh, distillates. Again, didn't impact the price. And gasoline inventories were down, down when they were expected to go up. And that just drove the price, you know, higher. Everything's pretty much driving the price uh, higher at this point. Then on Thursday, we got jobless claims data, which wasn't really very good because the continuing claims was higher, a little higher than expected. Initial was also higher than expected. So the jobless data was was worse than expected so that's that's not good either um and then on friday we got the hot cpi data and that really you know tanked the markets the markets reacted the vix popped up a little bit i think it hit 30 um and there's reference to an article that you can read in more detail u.s inflation un unexpectedly uh, rises to a 40-year high people were kind of thinking uh, inflation might uh, abate a little bit, and it did not. It hit a new 40-year high. So as we've been saying for quite some time, inflation is still hot, 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 and expected to continue to be so unless something changes it. And that's where we'll talk about the Fed meeting uh, coming up next week. And then we got uh, consumer sentiment data right after that, and it was the worst it's been in uh, the recorded history of this consumer uh, sentiment survey. So it was, it was again, the worst it's ever been as long as they've been doing this survey. So the consumer is not happy. They don't think things are good. They don't think it's going to get better, et cetera. So that's how we want to plan accordingly. Now, next week, uh, the Fed meeting is Wednesday is their announcement. The meeting, I guess, is Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but they come out and it's typically 2 p.m. The statement comes out. So 2 p.m. on Wednesday, the statement will come out. Uh, the talking heads will, will start reading it, et cetera, interpreting it. And then at 2.30, Powell will come out and give his press conference. So you definitely want to be positioned, prepare. This This is could be very well the start of the economic hurricane. I mean, they were expecting a 0.5% interest rate hike in uh, both June and July, and now they're talking that uh, they really should do a 0.75 or even a 1. I mean, I think Jim Craver came out and really wants them to do 1, shock the market, etc. cetera. Um, I won't talk about it too much, but I, I really don't think interest rates is the solution to inflation. I think the quantitative tightening and reducing liquidity out of the market is uh, what will, you know, actually solve uh, some of the inflation problems. But it may also, I expect it to drive us into recession. Again, these are my opinions, not financial advice. This is for education and entertainment purposes only. But th that's those are my opinions. So. Um, you can see the earnings calendar, and I haven't gotten the Benzinga one, but I'll post it soon. And just as a reference, um, as this economic data comes out, and I post, uh, I post this as close to real time as I can, now both a graphic version and a text version, as uh, Douglas had requested a graphical version, so I'm trying to do, do that as well. Um, and also, when I get the earnings calendar for Benzinga, I'll put that in the Surf the Markets channel in our Discord. And you can find an invitation to our Discord um, in the description box below. And I will try to throw it up in the banners if I can. Here we go. So. And so please join us in the Discord. Watch the Surf the Markets reports uh, channel. And again, I will post uh, the economic data, earnings data, et cetera, any other news that's pertinent in that Surf the Markets Reports uh, channel in our Discord. So now I want to go back and I want to look at uh, the indices. We'll look at the SPY, the Qs, the for each of the major um, exchanges.
So we can see that decline. We can see the major decline on uh, late in the week. Uh, again, the, the employment data. <coughs> So again, as I said, the employment data wasn't good. And then we got the hot CPI. So if I zoom out to the week, we can see, you know, we've been in a bear market. We had this bull rally in a bear market, peaked and came back down. So again, and it's trailing, the spy's trailing below its uh, moving averages. We expect further downside. Uh, we have no reason not to. So we're playing, continuing to play this as a, a bear market and, uh, uh, adapting accordingly. So I think last week's the title of our game plan was adapt or die. And the point being is as a trader, you we need to adapt to the conditions of the market. There's always opportunities to make money and we'll talk about those opportunities, uh, but we need to adapt. So again, we're in a bear market. We want to play it like a bear market. So let's look at the cues. We're going to see they're all pretty much the same. So again, pretty pretty much the same. It's below its averages. We had a short bull rally in a bear market, trailing down, got hit pretty you know pretty hard on the uh, increased uh, bond yields uh, over three percent. That puts pressure on tech, etc. But you know pretty much everything's uh, putting pressure on tech, particularly unprofitable tech. Um, we'll talk about the Dow. Let's look at the Dow DIA. So very similar, although it looks a little more stable right now. It did take a pretty good hit, but uh, it does look a little more stable. It's not as far from its moving averages. Again, these are industrials uh, more so. So uh, it may be a little more stable if we look at the IWM for the Russell, the Russell 2000 small caps. Yeah, not you know, not quite as bad. It is actually uh, made a little bit of a higher low, uh, so it may be recovering a little bit faster than some of the others. We look at the VIX, which in FinBiz you got to do at VX. We see it popped up. This isn't showing the pop up to 30, but I think it briefly did hit uh, 30 on Friday. Uh, we had a couple days of up, and here's another. You know, positioning thing is going into the Fed meeting. If we're going to get this peak again on the VIX, I would expect it to occur at the Fed meeting if they do something unexpected. So if they come out with a 0.75 or a 1, I would not be surprised if we got a, another spike in the VIX. Uh, we have our long positions right now we're using svxy we have buys sitting uh in which svxy is the short on the vix so we put a buy at the a bottom a support level on the vix or on svxy which corresponds with this uh, last peak in the vix so we've got those buys sitting there if uh, the vix spikes up like at the fed meeting uh, we'll catch those and then we will ride it back down as it's uh, natural for the, the VIX to retrace, revert to its mean. So that's that's probably my favorite trade is shorting the VIX with SVXY, catching one of these peaks and riding it down because it's almost a guaranteed winner at some point. So, so any questions on any of that so far from the chat? Uh, you can throw your questions up. I'll try to answer them as, as I can. Otherwise, we'll continue. And please feel free, if you're watching this after the fact, please feel free to put your questions in the comments. Uh, contact us via social media, in our Discord, etc. So here's the market screen in Weeble. Another view. I like, uh, there's a lot of information here. We do have another video on how to use this market screen in Weeble. So you can uh, refer to that. And just a quick uh, reminder, if you're not already using Weeble, they are continuing their offer for six free stocks, even though it's past their birthday now. Again, I don't know how long this will continue, but currently you can still get six free stocks. 
the first two worth up to $300. And then the second four, when you fund your account with any amount, each of which is up to $3,000. And again, Webull is our favorite tra trading platform. And right now you can get six free stocks just by opening an account. Uh, you can always just open the account, fund it, get your six stocks, cash them out, take the money, and do what you want. So I'd highly recommend at least getting your six free stocks while you can. So if we look at the histogram, again, I like this histogram in Weeble. It shows the distribution of advancers and decliners. So we can see, you know, a lot more decliners. Uh, this looks like almost four to one ratio and a significant uh, bump. It's not just the lowest uh, percentage, it's, it's a significant decline. So if we see net inflows, again, we'll see the NASDAQ got hit a lot harder than the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Again, that's tech, you know, growth. We also saw a general risk off on uh, Friday, so that also affected, uh, we'll talk about cryptocurrency tomorrow as well. Uh, but there, it was a general risk off, so uh, bond yields um, went up and every, everything else that was risky sold off heavily. So let's look at the best performing industries. And I want to go out to a week because uh, we know Friday was pretty much all red. So for the week, uh, we see energy was positive. Uh, we kind of know that. Energy retail took, you know, major hit. Again, we heard Target messed up. Big Lots had messed up their inventory. Walmart didn't do well, et cetera. We'll talk about retail in our strategy section as well. So stick around for the strategy section. Again, energy is pretty much the only good performer. Look at the ETFs. So market-wise, down on the Dow, down on the air, down, 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 right? So uh, it's everything's pointing down for Monday, not not unexpected. Again, uh, op plenty of opportunities to make money, uh, sell the rips. That was another one of our recent uh, game plans is in a bear market, you sell the rips. So, and that's a general strategy. Highly recommend, you know, until we're out of a bear market. That's that's the thing. You don't buy the dips. You buy the dips in a bull market. You sell the rips in a bear market. So uh, and we can see, you know, VIX pointing up. Industrials, uh, pretty much almost all red except for energy, a little consumer cyclical. A little financial commodities, soft, uh, any commodities, energy, etc. Live side that was interesting. I don't know what the pop in we'll see in the futures. There was a pop in livestock prices. I'm not sure where that was coming from. I didn't hear any news. So if anybody knows what the news that caused that, I would be interested in hearing that. But we can see livestock popped up as well as our our standard commodities. Broad basket, a beta, pure beta, that's interesting. I'm guessing people are trying to get negative beta, and negative beta would go up when the market goes down. And we do have some previous videos about how to find uh, negative beta stocks in FinViz. And then bonds, very short yield because we saw it inverted. Um, and then TYO, which is, uh, I think, a, a yield so, okay, let's look at the futures in FinViz. So again, we have another video on how to use this futures tab. You'll find it in the description box below, in the notes, etc. I always look at the futures. A lot of times I have this open either on a, the daily chart or even going down to the five minute chart which you can do, you can zoom it out or zoom it into hourly five minutes. So we see this big drop in all the indices. Uh, we can also see they haven't really bottomed yet. We see this previous capitulation bottom on each of them. So yeah, there's definitely some downside before we break that bottom. And when we hit that bottom, then the question is, are we gonna bounce back up or are we gonna break support and continue downward? 
Uh, so there's a lot of downside risk at this point. Uh, and we, we can see the Russell's got even more downside. See that pop in the VIX. So we see, you know, further upside potential in the VIX. And we see oils up in the 120s. And there's the pop in that gas. I think it went to 960 was that pop we caught. And we caught that with coal, wrote it down, made some money. We're going to do the same thing. If it pops up at that level or above, you can see it's been making higher lows, higher highs. So it's still trending up. And we're going to just keep scalping that top with cold, which is K-O-L-D. That's the short on natural gas. Bold, boil is the long. So if you want to try riding this up or longing um, net gas with boil and then turn around and short it back down with cold. Uh, same thing with oil for uh, long. You can use UCO, which is a long on WTI, or you can use gush, which is long on the uh, oil companies, or you can use drip or SCO to short oil companies and WTI uh, respectively. So again, the you know, same play. You can ride it up using the long when it peaks and rolls over. Then you can turn around and uh, short it. See the little pop in gold and silver. They popped on different days, but uh, I would not be surprised to see gold swing back up towards the 2000 range. We'll see, but it definitely is an inflationary hedge. So uh, then we see this pop in, in cattle. And uh, again, not sure what caused that. It looks like it is rolling over. There is an ETF to long that, but I don't know when to short it. The long on cattle and hogs is, uh, I think, cow. So then we see lumber's been trailing off. And then we see the dollar popped up and we see all the treasuries dumped. The price on the treasuries dumped, the yields went up to three, uh, et cetera, and the dollar popped up against all the foreign currencies. So given all this data, let's talk about our strategies for this week. How do we prepare for this uh, hurricane, this economic hurricane? So we live in Florida, so we're very familiar. I've been in Florida. I've lived here in Melbourne Beach since uh, 1998. And so I've been through tons of hurricanes. Um, and, uh, you know, years where we had, I was here in 2004, 2004, when we had four or five, two of which hit uh, very close to where I'm at. Uh, so we kind of know the drill, and uh, part of that drill is preparing your uh, evacuation plan is, you know, how are you going to get out uh, if you have to get out? And uh, we talked about, you know, selling the rips in a bear market. Well, that's part of, you know, getting out is uh, be, be ready to get out of your positions. If you get a pop into a profit, protect that pop, profit, sell that rip. So again, you can uh, get out before uh, the hurricane comes. That's, that's uh, your evacuation plan. So I hope that makes sense and please let us know. Um, and stockpile your supplies. So you'll hear, you know, prepare your hurricane kit is what they say. And that means you'll stock up on things that you don't require electricity to eat. Make sure you have plenty of water. And again, since we're in a rising hot inflation environment, um, it may make sense if you're going to buy something, it's going to probably be cheaper today uh, than, you know, tomorrow or a week from now, etc. So you may want to uh, make your purchases. We also did a video on our other uh, channel, a virtual consulting channel about, you know, get your cash now and make any purchases. Uh, you may want to consider making purchases 
um, before you know, rates uh, increase even further. So, and then secure your shelter. And uh, we'll talk about this more because uh, for the past several weeks, we've been talking about ways to inflation proof and recession proof your portfolio. We're going to add to that uh, this week as well. So, And part of what I wanted to talk about is uh, you heard the Target thing. Uh, is Target uh, had to take a big write down because their inventory was uh, in the wrong position. You know, they had the wrong stuff. So they're going to have to dump the stuff they've got to make room for stuff that they're going to need. Um, And they're also canceling orders from their suppliers. So they're marking down inventory, they're going to dump it, and then they're canceling orders uh, from their suppliers. And we're going to talk about the domino effect. I almost named this the title this week, uh, the domino effect or chain reaction, because this is what's going to, in my humble opinion, again, not financial advice, um, but again, in my humble opinion, this is what's going to drive us into recession is this uh, domino effect um, as companies uh, cancel orders from their suppliers, then, you know, those suppliers are going to have to cancel orders or lay off staff because they're losing their sales. And then this just dominoes down, right? Whoever they buy from, they're, they're canceling orders to those people. And so the, those people ha have to not buy things and lay off staff as well. So that's the concept of the domino effect or the chain reaction or whatever you want to call it. And we've seen this before, and I won't babble about it too much, but essentially um, in 2008 with the housing crisis, you know, the housing crisis really didn't affect other businesses, markets directly, uh, but it, the domino effect then impacted the whole rest of the economy. So we've seen this effect before, and now we're seeing retailers. We're also seeing the growth companies are laying off. Uh, they already canceled positions. Now they're laying off in larger numbers. And uh, the people that they, they buy things from then uh, are going to have to lay off, et cetera. So, uh, and again, you know, the clearance to dollar retailers, they buy this stuff when uh, Target or uh, not so much, you know, Walmart's going to be a beneficiary. Um, but your higher end stores, when they have to dump merchandise uh these discount real re retailers buy it up cheap and then they can sell it for a profit so you know we're watching big lots but here's a list of some of the discount retailers um that may b actually benefit from this dumping and there's also some in apparel i'm not as familiar so i may look into the apparel ones um my opinion automakers might be the next to do this is uh they could not sell because of the chip shortage and now they're getting chips and they're producing more but guess what i think everybody that wanted a car um, at this point with rising prices inflation and energy costs uh, most of the people that wanted to buy a new car probably already bought it and i think they're going to overproduce and then they're, they're going to have to turn around and dump inventory as well so watch for this a similar behavior in the auto suppliers will or automakers and we'll see we'll track this and keep an eye on it so so these other topics we've talked about before in terms of inflation proofing and recession proofing your portfolio i've left them in the notes so you can reference them again I'm not going to go over those, but we're going to talk about some of the new ones that I added to this list. And again, I'm trying to work up and find the time to do these as standalone videos. Uh, I just need to find the time to be able to do it. Uh, but like we were just talking, suppliers to retailers who mismanage their inventory uh, are going to be impacted. Um, and this is, you know, the chain reaction, the domino effect from uh, layoffs, et cetera, is another domino effect. So, so avoid those companies. I'll tab that one out one because it should, it's avoid companies 
that mismanage suppliers to retailers that mismanage their inventory, their suppliers, etc. So uh, think about, you know, where are these guys get getting their merchandise from? I know with Target, I think that it was mentioned appliances and things like that are going to uh, be part of their clearance. So those suppliers are probably going to get hit as well. Another one I came up with that I don't think we've seen yet, uh, but possibly is uh, companies that are, are reliant on enter discretionary spending by enterprises. So I, I think we're going to see enterprises cut back their spending as well, their discretionary spending. In other words, if they don't have to buy a piece of software right now, um, I don't think they're going to buy it right now. Uh, I think they're going to hold on to the cash given the current environment. And then those suppliers of that enterprise software or like consulting services, et cetera. Again, if they don't need it right now, I think they're going to hold off. And therefore, those suppliers are going to lose business, lose sales. Their earnings are going to suffer and it's going to cascade down from there. They may have to lay off, et cetera. So I think we're going to see a cascade in enterprise software, even the profitable ones. I think uh, we're going to see declining earnings, declining sales, more layoffs, and it's going to uh, cascade from there. So um, another thing I wanted to talk about briefly, uh, and I talked to Sonia about this in advance before the talking heads picked it up, uh, but they started talking that Biden really should invoke, if he wants to fix the energy problem, he's probably going to have to invoke the Defense Production Act to do it because um, as you'll see in articles, news, etc., cetera, uh, the oil companies, et cetera, have no other incentive to invest in uh, further production uh, when there's a, a negative sentiment towards uh, fossil fuels. So uh, listen for that. Um, I think there's the, I, I don't know if he, he had the opportunity at that um, presentation at the San Diego port and he didn't do it. And I was, I kind of expected to hear some, some mention of it there, but I didn't. So I'm waiting to hear that because I don't see anything else fixing the energy uh, problems at this point in time. So if you all have further opinions, you know, love to hear them, put them in the discussion in the comments and the discord, etc. And we can talk about it. So um, any other questions from anybody in the chat? Or again, if you're watching this after the fact, please put it in the comments. Uh, join us in the discord. We'll talk about it, etc. Um, if not, I will work on wrapping up and we'll use all of this data in part two tomorrow, part two of our weekly trading game plan tomorrow at 10 a.m. So uh, if you are not able to join us or we hope you'll return tomorrow at 10 a.m., join us for part two where we'll pick our stocks. We'll build, our, build out our watch list for next week um, and talk further about detailed strategies, etc. So. So I wanted to also ask a question of our community, our Beach Pump Trading community, and I've posted this on the community tab as a poll on our uh, YouTube channel. So if you go to our Beach Pump Trading YouTube channel um, and go to the community tab, there's a poll there that you can vote um, as to, I had uh, a Beach Bum tra Trader suggest to try out some different times to see what the best time for these live streams or premieres of our weekly trading game plans may be. So um, I'm asking you all, please vote. Uh, let us know. Is 9 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Eastern? What's what's the best time for everybody? And I'll, I'll do what I can to accommodate the, the majority of people um, so we can get the most interaction as possible uh, for our weekly trading game plans. So otherwise, uh, if we don't have any further questions, I hope that you'll Visit our homepage, join us in our Discord. You can find links to all these resources in the link section of our homepage, which is beachbumptrading.com, bum without the U. So again, links to all the resources. We hope you'll join us in our Discord. Again, we talk about topics. There's all kinds of uh, different topics on different asset classes, different trading styles, different trading platforms, etc. 
So, and we're open to suggestions. We have a suggestion box. So if you want to see something else in our Discord, in videos, uh, improvements in our video, etc. So um, thank you, Walter. And thank you for joining us. And I'm glad to hear. And if you're willing to support us uh, in our efforts, so we have a Patreon. You can go Patreon Beach Bum Trading. Again, it's totally voluntary for your support. Our Discord, joining our Discord is totally free. So you can join our Discord for free. But if you'd like to support our efforts, we certainly would greatly appreciate it. So if there are no other questions, again, these notes are posted in uh, the Google Drive that's available in the description box below, as well as past, um, past notes from our weekly trading game plans. And let us know uh, how else we can help you be successful in your trading career. So again, comments, our Discord, we have a Facebook group where you can hit us up on any of our social media sites. We'd be happy to uh, try to answer your questions, try to help you as, as much as we're able. Otherwise, uh, please come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. to join us for part two. Again, we'll build out our watch list, talk about detailed stock uh, strategies, detailed trading strategies for next week. So thank you all again for joining us in the live stream and or watching our video after the fact. Uh, we appreciate all of your time and have a great weekend. Have a great Saturday. Bye.